without prejudice, i.e., all natural and unalienable rights reserved. It is my understanding from Halsbury's Laws of England states that the oath does not authorize any judge or magistrate, in the common law jurisdiction of England and Wales, to adjudicate any hearing in which the matter is to be decided in any way other than by trial by jury. Furthermore, in the hearing in question held at the Magistrates Court County Court in Swindon Town on date March 7, 2017, where there is no injured party corpus delecti or victim, and no defendant, no clerk of the court. Therefore, the common law of under which the judge-slash-magistrate claimed authority is unlawful and constitutes an offense contrary to Section 13 of the Statutory Declarations Act 1835. The fact that the judge-slash-magistrate sat is considered to be prima facie evidence of the offense or crime. It is my understanding from reading. Halsbury's Laws of England that no magistrates or county court shouldn't exist, and when someone is summoned, it is an administrative meeting without any lawful existence. If this has transpired it is in breach of the Fraud Act 2006, C4, 5 and 6 below, as the judge-slash-magistrate, clerk and prosecutor step outside their lawful remit and become personally liable. It is my understanding that demanding monies by false representation is in breach of the Fraud Act 2006, Section 2. It is my understanding that demanding monies, without providing full disclosure, is in breach of the Fraud Act 2006, Section 3. It is my understanding that demanding monies, without providing evidence of authority, or jurisdiction, is in breach of the Fraud Act 2006, Section 4. It is my understanding that Halsbury's on Administrative Law 20 to 11. The law is absolutely clear on this subject. There is no authority for administrative courts in this country, and no act can be passed to legitimize them. It is my understanding that, according to observance of due process of Law 1368, Section 3, none shall be put to answer without due process of law. At the request of the Commons by their petitions put forth in this Parliament, to eschew the mischiefs and damages done to divers, renters of the Consumer Credit Act of his commons by false accusers, which oftentimes have made their accusations more for revenge and singular benefit than for the profit of the king or of his people, which the accused persons, some have been taken, and sometime forced to come before the king's council by writ, and otherwise upon grievous pain against the law, it is assented and accorded for the good governance of the commons, that no man or woman be put to answer without presentment before justices, or matter of record, or by due process, and writ original, according to the old law of the land, and if anything from henceforth be done to the contrary, it shall be void in the law, and holden for error. The common law was established by Alfred the Great, who reigned from 871-899 AD. He compiled the laws and customs of the nation into the Liber Judicialis, based on the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. Alfred's son, Edward, declared, To all who are charged with the common law of public affairs I give the express command that they show themselves in all things to be just judges precisely as in the Liber Judicialis it is written, nor shall any of them fear to declare the common law freely and courageously. In contradiction to common law, the civil law of Rome prevailed in continental Europe. When William the Conqueror invaded in 1066, he brought with him jurists and clerics steeped in the principles of Roman civil law known as canon law. Our ancient laws and customs withstood the shock and remained without any serious amendment. Common law includes the Charter of Liberties, Magna Carta 1215, which makes the monarch subject to the law, the 1102 Synod of Westminster which abolished slavery in England, the 1627 Petition of Right, which granted the right to criticize the government without fear of arrest, as well as Magna Carta, and the Declaration of Right, the Bill of Rights. The common law defends property rights and rights to self-defense. Many of our greatest constitutional documents are common law documents. These are not acts of parliament. Their principles cannot be repealed by Parliament, and when our monarch swore to uphold the laws and customs of the people of the England, and all its realms at her coronation oath of office, 
as she entered our head of state office, those laws and customs include common law. Our complete gratitude to the Observation Deck platform for sharing this information. Salute from our Sede Part Society, a walk Indian nation in America.